Hi, I'm Manuel Delicado. I'm in the Spanish program at the Australian National University. I normally teach language classes, second year Spanish, third year Spanish, but in addition to that, I also conduct research on some structural aspects of Spanish. So I look at certain uh, structural aspects of Spanish and their evolution, and I also compare them to the same ones or the equivalent ones in other related languages, like Portuguese, for instance. So let me give you an example first so you can more or less understand what it is that I've been studying. I'm particularly interested in subordinate clauses, okay? That might mean nothing to you at the moment. It's like, what is that? Okay, but so I'm gonna give you an example in English so you can see a little bit what's going on. If I say the fact that you're here makes me happy, that sounds fine, right? No problem there. If I say I'm happy about it, that's fine too. But if I try to say I'm happy about that you're here, that will be a bit no-no from you. It's like, mm, that example doesn't really work in, Spanish, in English, right? So that is actually very interesting because it does work in Spanish. It does work in other languages. It works in Portuguese too, but it wasn't always the case. So in historical, in all the stages of Spanish, we find it the English way. And at some point, those elements that we call prepositions, such, such as this about in English, but think of um, they, of, in Spanish in particular, started to show up in those similar contexts. That's one of the main ideas that I've been working on for some time. And one of my recent projects uh, extends that idea. And we, in collaboration with a colleague at Indiana University, my colleague Patricia Amaral, We've been looking at the combination of nouns, such as fact, for instance, and other uh, nouns like that, with those types of subordinate clauses, those type of clauses. So we looked at the evolution of the equivalent to the fact that in Spanish and Portuguese. And we wanted to look at the semantics or the meaning of the noun fact, what it is or what it isn't, and what it was and how it changed, and how the evolution of these two languages compare, right? Because if you know about Spanish, you must know about Portuguese too. They're very similar and sometimes they're the same, but they also have very key differences. And so we explore that in our um, recent projects. And this is something that we wanted to do with this, with this book. Hi, I'm Manuel Delicado. I'm in the Spanish program at the Australian National University. One of the uh, projects I'm working on is on the evolution in both Spanish and Portuguese of some noun-based constructions. By noun-based constructions, we mean, my colleague and I mean, uh, complex combinations uh, of um, syntax, syntactic uh, chunks that include that people around a noun. For instance, in one of the chapters, we focus on the evolution of nouns that can combine with a finite clause and also with an infinitile clause. For instance, the equivalent in English would be the evolution of the fact that. So we looked at hecho and fecho in historical Spanish and how that evolved and when that noun could combine with finite clauses and infinitile clauses. And the same for Portuguese with um, feito or facto. And in fact, the interesting uh, outcome of this chapter in particular is the fact that even though Spanish and Portuguese are quite similar, Portuguese has a doublet for fact. So while in Spanish we can see the evolution of the same noun uh, being more eventive in its meaning at the beginning and then becoming a factive noun, although that's also uh, disputed and we, we explain why in without data, in Portuguese we see a split. The all factum becomes feito in uh, Portuguese, but that is not the noun that can be used with this so-called factive construction. So in Portuguese you've got feito and then o factu de que, which is the one that's equivalent to English the fact that. That's one of the chapters. Then in uh, we also look at complex constructions, noun-based complex constructions, for instance, complex prepositions. There's a lot of literature on that and also light verb constructions, so uh, to make mention of something, for instance, to give you just an example in English. All of this have in common the fact that we're looking at the noun at the core of these constructions, and we want to, we've actually explored the evolution and the contribution in terms of the, uh, um, the complements that they can take, in this case, mostly uh, finite clauses and infinitable clauses, 
and we're looking at the syntactic evolution, the semantic evolution of the so-called complex constructions, and we'll look at um, issues such as semantic compositionality and then uh, the maintenance of syntactic analyzability. This project is also interesting because it'll, um, it tells us uh, how uh, categories change in time, uh, what the actual nature of these so-called complex constructions yeah, is. Sometimes it's seen as units that are not analyzable, so we want to, you know, we challenge that. And we also uh, uh, wanted to um, work on languages that are closely related, because Portuguese and Spanish are closely related, but we wanted to highlight the fact that even though they are similar, we shouldn't take it for granted that they're going to have the same evolution and the same categories or the same types of, um, of syntax, of, of syntactic constructions. And this is something that we wanted to do with this, with this book.